straight, this is your standard polyprotic sort of question. Okay, so I have the molarity, this is molarity here. I want to find all these equilibrium concentrations. First, uh, you have to ask H2S, is that a strong or a weak acid? Weak, yeah. So I have to use the ice table. Okay. If it was a strong acid, I wouldn't have to. But in this case, I will. Because it's weak. So plus H2O, you find, write down your standard equation. Goes to HS minus plus H3O plus. Just like any other reaction. Ice. Ignore water. So you've got zero and zero to start off with. Has to shift to the right. So this is pretty standard. There's nothing unusual here. It's just like doing a weak acid sort of question. So okay. Now I'm going to write my Ka. This is not actually, oh, let me write it out first and I'll ask you. Uh, HS, H3O plus, uh, H2S. So first of all, this should not be called Ka. What should it be called? Ka1. Yeah, it's Ka1 because it's the first loss of the proton. So really it's called Ka1. I need that numerical value. So I assume they want you to just look in the book. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, but there's a table in your book that lists all the acids. Here we go. It looks like H2S 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. Oh, it's pKa is totally neutral. It's uh, 7. So it's, so I found this in the, in the book, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. Alright. Uh, now I just plug in like normal. Everything's normal here. Equals, or however you want. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 equals x squared over 0 0.075 minus x. I'm going to, I'll write this in white, assume x is a lot smaller than 0 0.075. That's going to be a really good assumption because Ka1 is really tiny. So I know it's going to work. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 equals x squared over 0 0.075. Can somebody find X for me so I can solve the rest of the problem? I'll see if I find it in the textbook here or in the solutions key. But we need X, otherwise I can't finish the problem. Uh, 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so that's x. Uh, let's see where I was going here. So I now, that I know x, I know hs minus. What's x? Check. I also know h3o plus, because that's equal to x. Check. I found two out of the three. I'm two-thirds the way there. By the way, on the test sometimes, you'll see on the practice test, I will have you check this assumption. Do you want me to do that for you, yeah. mathematically? Okay. The way you check your assumption, if you want to, it's the same equation as the percent ionization. Okay. Which is uh, going to be your, for acid, H3O plus divided by HA, uh, the acid H2S, times 100. So in this case, it'll be X, this tiny number, divided by 0 0.075 times 100. 
Okay. So if you ever need to check it, you just use that equation. And then that has to give you a value. Usually less than five less percent. Than yeah, yeah. Even if it was less than 10%, I'd be fine with it. Uh, okay, so that's, anyways, that was a side note. Uh, now, I'm going to erase part of this here. Let me write down, now we're done with the first reaction. Let me write down the second reaction. That's after I have already lost one proton. So this is a second reaction for this polyproton. Reacts with H2O. And that goes to S2 minus, loses a proton, is a trio plus. The first one is a Ka1, this will be a Ka2. Okay, here comes the tricky part. For this, do I need to use an ice table? To find, I have to find this concentration right there. Not in this case. If it's a polyprotic, after I dump and finish the first reaction, that's the only one I need the ice table for. After that, I do not need the ice table anymore. You'll see why momentarily, if you don't know why. The reason has to do with the Ka2 expression. And I'm going to actually do this the hard way first, and then I'll do it the easy way second. The hard way is to write out the Ka2 expression, H3O plus, all the products, times S2 minus, all over HS minus. Okay? Uh, do I know the HS minus concentration? I do, it's this value right here. So this is 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Do I know H3O plus? I do, it's the same number. 8.7 times 10 to the minus 5, because they're both equal to x from before. So, oops, these two will cancel, and whatever this is, is going to equal to Ka2. So, the S2 minus concentration is equal to Ka2. I'll look that up. Uh, you find that in your text. If it was the test, I'd just give it to you. 1 times 10 to the minus 19. So now I have S2 minus. Check all the values I needed. Uh, the easy way to do this is not much easier, but it's a little easier. The concentration of the ion after losing two protons will always equal Ka2. Say it again. Concentration of the ion after the loss of the second proton, so see it lost two protons, is always equal to Ka2. You will see, well, I guess that's it. First I'll ask if there's any questions. Did you say that one more time? The concentration of the ion after losing two protons. So we started with H2S, take away two H's. S2 minus, which is this one right here is always equal to Ka2, numerically. So I didn't even have to do this solution. I just wrote S2 minus us K2. I, even before I started the problem, I could have said, oh, this is K2. Done. Done with that one. I have to still find the other ones. If it was the triple polyprotic acid, when you have to solve for the third, um, like K3, uh -huh. or the third, yeah. Concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you do that? If there was a third loss of the proton, uh, you can't really do it in this one, but you'd write out Ka3, whatever it is, and you'll see that two K3 you'll have, that's a given, and you'll see two of these concentrations you already have from a previous part of the problem. You just plug it in numerically and solve for the last concentration. And you'll see we did that with the phosphate in class.